welcome to the show. As always, we're here to talk about what's possible in construction. With us today is Daniel Fami Solomon. He's the co-founder of Alt CPM, uh, co-founder of Build4, and he's senior schedule, scheduler with uh, Robbins and Morton. I've known Daniel for years. Uh, he has lots of experience with construction. He has lots of experience with the issues facing this industry and a strong background in providing pretty innovative solutions around that. So welcome to the show, Daniel. Hey, Dan, thanks for having me. Yeah, man, um, I'm thinking let's let's just kind of kick this off. Let's get into it. So in your opinion, you're a scheduling expert, you're a construction expert, technology expert. So what are the fundamental issues facing construction, uh, you know, the challenges with construction scheduling? Well, first of all, thanks for calling me an expert. Uh, a lot <laughs> of people may disagree with you, but. Uh, yeah, man, I'm fast and loose with the word expert. <laughs> Yeah, I'm, I'm an expert at failing, uh, but I heard that failing is uh, just another, uh, it's a, another word for finding the wrong way to do something. So, um, but yeah, the, yeah, scheduling, that's, that's a good point. So uh, I actually got my start in, uh, well, doing estimating and then BIM shortly thereafter. And that's how actually you and I met. Um, you actually hired me for the LAX International Terminal job and that, Believe it or not, kicked off early on. Uh, I sat in a synchro class there, and that kicked off my interest into scheduling. And you know, ever since then, that was what over ten years ago now. Uh, since then, you know, I've kind of always been involved in BIM and scheduling, um, and even got into you know, four uh, D scheduling at the Marlins ballpark down here in Miami. So, like, one of the things I learned. Um, and it took me a while to learn this was, um, you can do 4d and you can spend, you know, ridiculous amount of hours getting everything right. Um, but if nobody understands or looks or digests what you're feeding them, then it's all for not, right? It's all for nothing. Yeah. So I actually didn't realize that at the Marlins ballpark, I you know, put everything into 4D. It was awesome. I had all the cranes, all the fall protection, like zones and, you know, and we, and by the way, the schedule before we put it in 4D was a mess, right? I mean, like we had uh, stuff going out of sequence and, and if you just fix the logic and nothing else, we were going to be four months uh, too late, right? And, yeah. and the thing about ballparks is they have to finish on time or next season. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, but I didn't learn it, my lesson there because I would like play the video and be like, all right, guys, any questions about how yeah. we do this thing? And Good job, everyone. I got a video for you to see. Uh, <laughs> thank you. I'll be back in a month. Uh, yeah. But, but I agree with you. It's, it's like, you know, if we look at like, what are we, why are we fundamentally doing this? What's our, you know, desired outcomes of this activity? Like, what's the purpose? And if we're not, improving communication, if we're not optimizing the sequencing, if we're not, you know, getting people on the same page, what's the point? You know, I, you know, where, where's the value? Right. Yeah. And a lot of it has to do with just like ask, you know, forcing the superintendent not to, to give you the thumbs up or the thumbs down, but say like, what do you want? What do you need? And yeah. even doing the, um, actually this is from the Toyota, you know, way. Uh, the five whys. Why yeah. do you want this? Okay, well, why do you want that? Okay, so you said, you know, X is Y. Then, okay, so Y, X. Yeah. Uh, okay, Y, Z. Yeah. And just keep going. And fun then you find the fundamental um, need or want from the superintendent. So, I yeah, I made that mistake early on in my career, and it took me a while to learn that. And I think, actually, a lot of people have not learned that yet. So, I've been trying to, to, to show people the way. Um, and actually, one of the things we, we did by accident, and that was actually a collaboration with you guys, was uh, our Control Wiz uh, product. So, so Build4, which is the subs subsidiary of Robbins & Morton, who, for your audience that doesn't know, uh, we're ENR 100 uh, GC, do basically just healthcare, um, but we'll do some hospitality, et cetera. But anyway, we you know do our own in-house BIM coordination. And uh, one of the things that I kind of always wanted to do, uh, but never really had the opportunity, was to use an Xbox controller to yeah. walk around Navis because 
if anyway, I'm sure Dan, you've had this experience when you try to like show a superintendent, like, Oh, look, this is how you navigate. Now yeah. works. You know, walk yeah. is pressed down on the, yeah. on the thing, move yeah. forward, but then like not too much. And then, you know, Alt left click F five. Can't you remember that? Yeah, I know. I get it. And, and you know, that person has a million things on their mind and remembering a bunch of keyboards. Right. Shortcuts is not. Yeah. Not, yeah, yeah. So we got, yeah. So we got the, the, um, I got one right here. Oh yeah. And the green screen's a little. No, it looks awesome with the green screen. It's like, <laughs> it's like dude, what, is, what is that? Xbox 1080? You know what I mean? That's like a future one. <laughs> oh yeah. That's right. Let's see the, you got the one, your old one still? No, nah, man. It's uh, it? not with me. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I had one. I have one from like 2008. It's vintage. Yeah. You had, yeah. You had the original. Yeah. Original one, right? <laughs> yeah. So Control Wiz is backwards compatible to the original Xbox controller. Just want to throw that out there. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> that's awesome. And I, and actually, we're working with you guys right now on getting uh, the new Xbox Series X, like the the new new controllers. Yeah. Um, I think it might already be compatible with those, but we are working on PlayStation Five controllers. Which as soon as I get my PlayStation Five, we're yeah. gonna. <laughs> So, so let's take this a level back. So what, what, I guess what's the point of this uh, controller navigator we're, we're talking about here? Yeah. Well, look, the, um, you know, Steve Jobs um, said, you know, the best camera is the one that's in your pocket, right? Yeah. So if, if you have a control, if you have a model and you want the superintendent to use it, you have to break it down. Like, how are they going to use it? So the, the control wizard was a great solution for essentially field people, right? Superintendents, field engineers that just need to like get up and go and don't have time to learn, you know, new hand movements and gestures, right? So that that's really good. And then we actually work with you guys uh, from scratch on Control Wiz for Revit, which kind of mm -hmm. has a different use case. That one is more like, well, you want to do, because superintendents aren't really working in Revit, uh, but, that, but uh, designers are, right? So if yeah. they're, if they're uh, wanting to do like cool 3D rendering, like walkthroughs, um, you know, the only way to do that is like using Enscape or like um, Lumion or, you know, Twin Motion. Um, so, but with the Xbox controller and in Revit 2020 and newer, you can do real time rendering. And mm -hmm. so you can basically do, you know, whatever you want to do in Lumion or Enscape. Um, you know, more or less, not, not exactly hundred percent, you know, as good, but you know, 90% of the way there. Uh, so we think it's like a really good value for, for that reason as well. Yeah. And, and one of the things I like particularly about the, the Navisworks controller is, um, you know, you're on job site, you have this idea of like some job sites have like stations set up where they have computers, they got printers, maybe in a job box, maybe on a table somewhere. And with those, it's kind of cluttered. Like if you have you have all this stuff on a table, it's like you got computers, mice, you got wires everywhere, you got TV screen. Uh, by keeping it simple and, and essentially just having that monitor and an Xbox controller and maybe you know uh, something simple, it's, it's uh, like easier for people to get there, pick it up, show them what they need to do. Uh, you know, zoom to a level, zoom to a room, whatever, in a, in a pretty intuitive way. Yeah. And it just, in my opinion, it just kind of takes away a little friction. And anytime you can take away a little friction in the process, you've got a better chance at getting people on board with it. And, yeah. and you know, uh, if we're talking about themes here, you know, one of the themes I think of a technologist and innovator is is really look at what people want want to get out of something. What's your desired outcomes? And then remove all the roadblocks, make it as easy as possible for them to get it. So, you know, you know, if I, why it, why aren't you doing this? Ah, it's too hard. Why aren't you doing this? I don't know how, why aren't you doing it? You're just taking away those excuses one by one. Um, and yeah, the definition of innovation, right? Yeah. Yeah. It's for removing and, the steps. Yeah. we're talking about that Xbox thing you built. Um, and the other thing we're seeing too, it's, uh, you know, it's intuitive nowadays, like, like everyone, not everyone, but so many people grew up using those. Um, you know, it's yeah. Yeah, you're you're right, but I mean, I can't tell you how many times I hand this to a older superintendent. Yeah. I mean, if you go to our landing page for Controlwiz, <laughs> controlwiz dot com, yeah. you see a video. Uh, Robert Grady, he's he's our MP, MEP manager for Robbins Morton. 
super smart guy, but you know, he's, I don't want to make him sound older than he is, but you know, he's like, he's got grandkids. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Uh, he did not grow up with Xbox or PlayStation. <laughs> that's for sure. And this guy just picked it up and he was like, hell yeah. Yeah. Hell yeah. yeah. I can for freaking, sure. I can use this now. And they got he, like little games where they hide little cars and uh, <laughs> someone hit a Thunderbird in, in one of the models. And they said, first person to find it gets a, uh, you know, gets some prize or whatever. Yeah. Well, well that's awesome, man, for sure. Um, yeah. I, I do want to wind it back up, though, and, and kind of circle back. So we talked about, you know, some fundamental issues, challenges, friction points with getting technology at construction. I want to hone in to, to, to scheduling specifically because, as I see it, there's there's this disconnect between, you know, like an office-driven CPM schedule, a, like, BIM-driven, like, 4D thing, mm-hmm. and a superintendent field-driven, like, activity plan, look-ahead plan. Mm-hmm. And all three of those worlds, they have different technology, mm-hmm. you know, whether it's Excel or Synchro or, mm-hmm. you know, P6. They have different like vocabulary. They have different users. Uh, mm-hmm. Those people don't really talk to each other that much. And they're, they're not, you know, uh, part of the challenges is like they're not working towards the same goals. They're not marching in the same direction. So I want to get your thoughts on that. Yeah. That, well, that's, that's a, that's a, yeah, there's lots to unpack there, but yeah. you're right. I mean, with the 4D, I mean, look, my, my stance is pretty unique being someone that's been in 4D most of their career. And then two years ago to say, and I'll tell you why this happened, but my conclusion has is now 4D is is not what it's all, everyone thought it was cracked up to be. Yeah. Uh, and the reason I say that, and I'll, I'll tell the story very easily, is again, I've been working with Synchro. I was a consultant for them, you know, um, again, thanks to your introduction back in 2010, maybe 2009. No, 2009. Um, anyway, so became essentially a 4d expert uh did consulting did training joined robbins and morton in 2017 and later on that year uh basically my first job there we won the the synchro digital construction award project of the year right cool and this is a global award we beat the skanskas and the dprs uh and they were in the running and uh and we went to amsterdam uh to accept the award it was it was pretty cool it was, it was like a landmark moment in my career and I returned back and I go back to the job site and mind you, winning that award was validation, right? So winning that award said we did everything right. And we did like, I, I'm super proud of, of the team. And, and it wasn't just me, right? There's like, we had the superintendent was involved, et cetera, but we had validated that we did everything right. And we, and I go back to the job site and people aren't even looking at the 4d like it, it to them, it was marketing. Yeah. It wasn't, it wasn't operations. And instead, they were looking at the the Visio schedules, right? And uh, some people may not be familiar with the Visio schedules, but essentially, it's like a instead of a Gantt chart that you get your your schedule from, it's it's more of a, a t- they call it the time scale logic diagram. Uh, so the bars can be on the same row, tasks can be on the same row, and it tends to be color coded by uh, trade or whatever. Um, and you can fill a lot more tasks on a, on a piece of paper. And generally they're, they're printed big and hung up on the trailer wall. Um, seeing that, seeing people refer to that, mind you, these, these are not CPM powered schedules Mm -hmm. made me realize, you know what? 4d is not what I thought it was. 4d is not that, that bridge to get people to understand what they have to build and when and how, right? Maybe this video schedule is. Yeah. So we actually set out to build a, essentially a plugin for Visio that does two things. Number one, it allows you to create a schedule from scratch. Mm-hmm. Um, you just type in the, essentially the dates, the, the, the size of the page that you want, and it automatically creates the time scales for you at the top and the bottom. Um, it'll automatically color code by any activity codes, et cetera. Uh, and then the other thing it does is import CPM schedules from like P6 or even Synchro. Yeah. Uh, and again, color code by activity codes. And I can do all that stuff for you. You know, it's a couple of clicks and you're done. Yeah. Um, we're seeing a lot of adoption within our company for this for this tool. And it's it's really just we got hanging up at, you know, dozens of, of job site, you know, conference room walls. And it's proven to be indispensable because it's tied to the 
or a lot of them are tied to the CPM schedule. So it's, it's really great. Yeah. Yeah. I hear you. And, and one of the things I heard you say is it's, you know, if I'm looking at a 4d schedule and, you know, maybe I'm playing the movie, maybe I'm in a computer file, but if I'm, you know, if I'm part of the field team, I'm like, okay, that's great. But what's the mechanical contractor doing on Tuesday? And then next week and the week after, how can you show me that with your 40? And it turns out that that's kind of like hard, you know, it's, it's mm-hmm. great for like logistics and planning and like big picture communication. Don't get me wrong. Um, mm-hmm. But when it gets down to like uh, some mechanical guys doing rough in, and then mm-hmm. once you're going to hand it over to the next guy and that, you know, that, that predecessor relationship, it's, it's hard to dissect a 40 that way. So I think, you know, what you're talking about is, is some of that value add of like that true, like day to day field type stuff of like, Here's my guy, you know, here's the teams. What are the teams doing now? What are they doing next? Um, and what is, you know, when are they going to be complete? Right. And, and, you know, digging into that is key. Um, yeah. And you know what? The It's not just beneficial for the superintendent. It's the, the project exec. It's yeah. the foreman. Right. It's everyone can actually now understand it because Gantt charts kind of suck. Um, yeah. Well, we've all been there before, like, you know, me and you were on a giant job together and, uh, that, that schedule is like, you know, 500 pages of 11 by 17. And you're just kind of like, how does this tie to that? Okay. Turn to page 214. Uh, where's 214? You know, it's like, it was impossible. You know, you know, they just not, that's not the optimal way to do it. So, you know, you know, I think the hunger is, is. Like, like, how do we tie these things together to, you know, really create some like understanding, some shared understanding yeah. out of it. And then that flexibility and quickness, simplicity mm-hmm. to use um, are all just key yeah. to it. And, uh, and, you know, I want to be clear, too. I don't think 4D is I, I am talking, you know, I am saying that it's, it's not all it's cracked up to be. I, I do think there's a use. I don't think yeah. the use case is communicating the schedule to yeah. to people that are building the job. Instead, I think it's it's good for schedulers or yeah. people that are trying to figure out logistically how to build this building. I really like Alice Technologies. Yeah. They have a 4D solution that I think is phenomenal. Um, I, I don't think, you know, I, when they try to sell you on like, this is how you can, you know, communicate your schedule. I don't think that's that's great, but I think yeah. they do have a, a, a really good tool. Um, yeah. I, to, I like that you brought up Alice, man. Um, <laughs> And that gets me to kind of another topic. It's it's like when you're looking at Alice, you're kind of looking at the future and, and, you know, the future today. But what do you think a scheduler does in like 10 years from now? Like, like what's that going to look like? What what was the scheduler do? How do they dissect this? Like, do you think we're going to have a bunch of different tools? Do you think we're going to have new processes? Like, we all know CPM's a little flawed, pros and cons there. Mm-hmm. Um what are your thoughts, man, on the future yeah. of this? Thanks for a nice little layup there. <laughs> yeah. Oh. <laughs> yeah. The uh, look. My, uh, so building out that video plugin made yeah. me realize something, yeah. and that is, first of all, it's very similar to uh, linking a CPM model to a 3D model. You can see where all the the busts in the logic are. Yeah. Um, but this exposed more than that. This exposed like there's busts in the the organization and the communication of the schedule. Um, and there's just issues and, uh, you know, there's a lot of things going on and I realized, you know what, in general, CPM is broken. And I did, I did a, um, I did a session for the, the, uh, construction planning and scheduling conference last year. And I, I, I gave a, a talk on, on why CPM is broken and it is yeah. broken. Okay, so CPM was built in the 70s by DuPont. It wasn't made for construction. Mm-hmm. And one thing you'll notice is, if, you remember that uh, McKinsey uh, chart that shows productivity dropping? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've seen it before, like yeah. once. Yeah, well, everyone's seen it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm sick of seeing it, but <laughs> yeah. Uh, but what, if you overlay when CPM was introduced into construction with that chart, it's yeah. like, it's... I it's a hell of a coincidence, right? It could, yeah. it could be a coincidence. Um, I think there's a, a, I think there's a correlation somewhere, but just CPM. If you just even think of break it down to the fundamentals, the first thing 
what is it? Critical path method. It says you have this task and it's linked to this task and it's linked to this task. And there's this whole network of tasks. And then your longest path of tasks, that is your critical path. And that is how, that's how long your schedule is. Mm -hmm. Well, so what that means is at any given moment during the project, you are working on a critical task. Okay. And if that critical task is delayed even one day, yeah, that means your project is late. Yeah. How are we, how is that? I mean, we're in construction. Things go wrong daily. Yeah, and yeah. So if we're really thinking that like, you know, if we're really building per the critical path method, then we're lying to ourselves because what's happening is people are there, you know, we're sending out these uh, data collection sheets and we say, hey, tell us how long it's going to do to build this, right? And the subcontractor comes back and they go, oh, it's going to take me 15 days. In reality, it's probably going to take them less than half of that, but they need to build in buffer because if they're late, if something wrong happens, you know, we're, we're screwed. So CPM is broken in that regard. And then the other thing is we have this hard logic, um, soft logic issue. And so if you're a scheduler, you know, uh, you might know the difference. Uh, and if you don't, you know, I'll explain it right now. It's very simple. Hard logic is what must be, right? So like you can't paint a wall until the wall is hung and finished. Pretty straightforward. Soft logic is preference. And that's saying, I'm not going to paint this wall because I want to paint that other wall first. And because I'd like to, you know, or some people might call that resource relationships. Um, the thing with that is that changes constantly. So again, if you're on a construction job site where things happen and they don't go according to plan, you have to be able to pivot. But if you are so set on doing things in a certain sequence, it's very hard to, to, to modify that. And CPM only allows for one type of relationship. It's just, it's just called a relationship. That's it. And so you have to somehow remember what's hard and what's soft and there's no way to like filter and say like oh well select all my soft logic tasks and reorg you know like that's not it's not possible and then the the, the and there's a bunch of other you know I, I listed out 12 reasons those are only i think three yeah um but the biggest one that i think and this is the one i'm kind of addressing on my on uh, addressing right now on a little side side hustle i got going on called alt cpm and that is the the delay and the inability to pivot when things go wrong. So again, construction sites, things happen all the time. Yet we have schedule update meetings every two weeks or every month. And so if you have a schedule update meeting and then the very, very next day, one of your key subcontractors just flat out doesn't show up for a week, you can't even pivot until next month. <laughs> Mm -hmm. when your when your scheduler is, is going to be back on site right so that is that is an issue and i think you know one thing we've been floating around is this idea of pre-filled daily logs right so we get the schedule um and and we're developing a, a tool right now called plan flow um, but essentially it takes your schedule and it creates using, you know, using some, I'm not going to call it AI or ML or whatever, but it, we're using some advanced tech here to automatically assign it to the corresponding subcontractors. So like each mm -hmm. task. So if it's, you know, install life fixtures, we know that it belongs to the electrician and we'll automatically assign it to the electrician and the electrician will see it on his, on his phone. Mm -hmm. And so this, it's like a mobile first application. And so you have these pre-filled daily logs, daily reports, and the subcontractors can mark them as like on track or not. And this is key, especially for those critical activities, the ones that can't be delayed even one day. Yeah. And so almost every day, the subcon you know, subcontractors are asked, like, confirm this finish date, confirm the finish date, confirm the finish date. Um, and if you can't create the, you know, create a constraint. So we have this like kind of smart constraint log that we're doing. Yeah. Um, so what's really valuable about this is it, it does several, it checks off several boxes. Number one, it gives the scheduler an update daily, like near real time. Um, and if a, an activity that is on the critical path is delayed or is early, then people need to know, like we can't wait a month to, to find out that our, our schedule is late. Um, and then we have some cool, like not cool, but like, you know, beneficial analytics. So when you have trades that are lacking in manpower, or, you know, they're in people's way all the time, or if there's yeah. a weather issue or whatever, you know, this is like true, bene truly beneficial 
data. Yeah, it sounds to me like you're borrowing a bunch of ideas from Last Planner system, but then saw, and working to integrate them into the world of a CPM scheduler. Right. Is that fair? Yeah, I mean, the, yeah. so the CPM scheduler, so yeah, to answer your, your initial question, like what, what are schedulers doing? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it went the long way. <laughs> oh, that's cool. But, but what schedulers, I think what schedulers are doing is they're probably, my vision, my, you know, um, dream dream world is schedulers don't exist anymore. It's yeah. superintendents are schedulers. They're the ones creating the scheduler uh, schedule. And schedulers instead are those data analytics guys. Okay. They are the ones finding out, okay, is the, first of all, is the schedule like valid? Are we, do we have, are we over constrained? Um, but they're also finding out which trades are, are, are lacking or what, what is causing all the slowdowns? Cause there's, um, one of the things in, in CPM that number, I guess five, you can call it one of the downfalls is it only recognizes, uh, work previous work constraints. Yeah. So the only reason your task starts on a certain day is because some other previous work has to finish. But in the real world, we have material constraints, we have labor constraints, equipment, um, space, yeah. um, there's information and permission Safety, constraints, yeah. Yeah, yeah. right? Weather, uh, pandemics, uh, stuff like that, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, so those are all real, but CPM doesn't account for those. It, it, it could like after the fact, it could say, okay, well, last month of reason we didn't start this on time is because, you know, material didn't arrive and yeah. when we plug that in. Um, but that's, it's too late. So that's what schedulers are going to be doing. They're going to be these, these data analysts that are really going to fine tune and forget about like finding out a, a, a project. If a pro, if a project is in trouble or not, you're going to be at this point, it's, it's not going to be that it's going to be like, well, how much profit are we going to like, how can we maximize profit? Like you're going to yeah. be guaranteed to make profit. And now it's just a matter of how we're going to maximize that. Yeah. If, if I'm hearing you right, it's about optimizing, um, towards these, these strategic project goals. So it's, you know, optimizing resources, uh, under, you know, seeing around corners, um, you know, uh, and, and linking that together. Uh, I, I just want to say, I, I like that. I share that view, vision. Uh, I think we're going to see that. I think, you know, when you, you think about these specialist roles who do specialist things with special software, that's an easy target. We got to stop doing that as an industry. Um, yeah. You know, and we need to empower the, the people who are building, you know, a super intense CEO of a project. Um, you know, we have to equip that person with. Where'd you get with, that from? I don't know. Super intense CEO of this project. Dude, it's a fortune cookie <laughs> that's, last night, you know? No, that's one of our. Uh, yeah. Is one. that your thing? Or yeah. You, okay, cool. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I, yeah but yeah. I'm glad you like it. I'm glad you. Yeah. It, it's true. It's true. Yeah. It's, yeah, we can't like conflate this stuff. You're absolutely right. This, this, and, and like you said, you have to eliminate the steps and that includes yeah. the superintendent having to communicate with the scheduler to tell him what the schedule should say. Yeah. And then this dance of going back and forth. Um, and then it's still wrong. Uh, this is my daily job right now as a scheduler is I talk to the superintendent and then I build what he wants. And then he goes, Oh, you know what? No, nah, that's not, not so much. Yeah. So, uh, with that, you know, we're coming up against time here. Uh, I want to give you opportunity. Where do people find you? Where do they reach you? What are your websites? Yeah. Uh, if you want to learn more, you can go to altcpm.com or, or planflow.io. They'll, they'll bring you to the same place. Uh, but essentially, um, right now we're in our beta mode. We got a couple customers running this auto daily log tool that, that we got going. Um, and so far we got great, great response. Um, it was still a few months away from, from going public, but it's, um, yeah, you can, you can reach me there or on LinkedIn with my name. Awesome. Thanks for having you. Uh, and thanks everyone for listening until next time.